Hello, this is Mr. Vol, and this is my presentation on the history of the discoveries that led to our understanding of the structure of the atom. I want to start this presentation just before the dawn of the 20th century, when in 1897 J.J. Thompson experimented with some new technology in his lab. This new technology, called a cathode ray tube, was a tube that was filled with gas under a low pressure vacuum. Also in this tube were two plus and minus plates at either end. In between these plates was a third plate with a slit cut in it that was directly in the path of these positively and negatively charged plates. As a high voltage charge was applied to the plus and minus plates, a beam of light flowed through the tube. Thompson found that a magnet could deflect the beam of light in the tube. When he put the positive end of the magnet to the tube, it attracted this beam. The negative end of a magnet repelled it. From these observations, Thompson found that a cathode ray was a stream of tiny negatively charged particles moving at high speed. Thompson had discovered the first subatomic particle, called the electron. From his data, Thompson came up with a model called the Plum Pudding Model of the Atom, in which he said that electrons were stuck in a lump of positive charge, like plums in pudding or raisins in dough. Thompson's work with the cathode ray revealed that electrons were negatively charged particles, but atoms are electrically neutral. You can easily see this by touching any object. You don't get a shock when you touch a desktop or a book. So there must be a particle with positive charge that cancels out the charge of the electron. We need to go even further back than 1897 to 1886, when another scientist named Goldstein discovered the proton. In 1886, Goldstein was also observing a cathode ray tube and found rays traveling in the opposite direction to the cathode rays. He called these rays canal rays. The canal rays were actually protons. But by the dawn of the 20th century, even though the electron and the proton had been discovered, no one knew how they were put together to form an atom. This all changed in 1911 when Rutherford devised the gold foil experiment. In this experiment, Rutherford shined a narrow beam of alpha particles and directed them at a thin sheet of gold foil. What he found was extraordinary for the time. Some particles bounced back while most passed straight through or were partially deflected by the thin gold foil. From his observations, Rutherford concluded that an atom was mostly empty space except for the center or nucleus where all of the positive charge and almost all of the mass was located. Rutherford's model was revolutionary, but it explained only a few properties of atoms. It did not explain the chemical behaviors of elements. For instance, when you heat a piece of iron in a fire, first it glows red, then yellow, then white. The Rutherford model did not address this. It did not talk at all about how electrons were placed around the nucleus in an atom. In 1913, Niels Bohr proposed a solution to the shortcomings of Rutherford's model. Bohr proposed that an electron was found only in specific paths or orbits around the nucleus. Each of these orbits had a fixed energy, called an energy level. Electrons in the atom could not be between the energy levels, and to move from one energy level to another, an electron would have to lose a fixed amount of energy called a quantum. Bohr defined a quantum as the energy required to move an electron from one energy level to another. The energy levels of an atom were said to be quantized. According to Bohr, the higher the energy levels of an atom, the more closely that they were spaced. Therefore, it took less energy for an electron to change energy levels the farther from the nucleus that the energy levels were. The Bohr model gave results in agreement with the behavior of the hydrogen atom, but agreed less with more complex atoms. 
The Bohr model paved the way for the quantum mechanical model, which is the model of the atom that we use today. This model, developed in 1926 by Erwin Schrödinger, came from the mathematical solutions to Schrödinger's equations. The solutions to these equations determined two things. The first was the allowed energy level of an electron. The second was the probability of finding an electron in various locations around the nucleus. That probability density concept led to the definition of the atomic orbital, which was a region of space where there was a high probability of finding an electron. Thank you for taking a look at this presentation. Please take a look at the sources for further readings to expand your understanding of the topics covered.